How's it going guys? Welcome to the next section where we're actually going to start implementing some code. So some things that we're going to need to get started is you're going to need a text editor. So I'm using Visual Studio Code. You're going to need Postgres or PostgreSQL, however you want to say it. So you can just go ahead, search on Google, type in Postgres, and then just go ahead and install that. And in my previous two series, I showed how to do that. So just if you're not sure, then just go ahead and check that out. So to, I guess, get started, I'm just going to start this database. I'm going to open Postgres. And then I'm going to find wherever it is. There it is, Postgres. Double click on that. Now we're inside of Postgres. And then I'm going to create a database. So create database. I'm going to call it auth system. And the owner is going to be Postgres. And then make sure to have a semicolon. There we go. We created our database. So that's one thing we're going to need. So that's going to be running in the background there. I'm going to make a folder here for the back end. And then here I'm just going to implement all the back end logic and then in my terminal. So right now I'm in this auth system folder. So this is this root area here and I'm just going to go ahead and run MPX create react app. And then I'm going to call it front end. And then this is just going to do the front end setup. So I might as well just have that going right now while I do the rest of this stuff. All right, so before I continue, I just want to mention that one thing that I want to kind of do going forward with my like videos is I want to keep them like a little shorter. So I'm going to be trying to keep them around like 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes max for like each kind of little thing I implement instead of having like very long, like I guess, like videos showcasing how to do like a complete like backend setup or something. So just breaking things up into smaller sections, I think will be a little better and then also just keeping the projects a little smaller. So just kind of having like one specific sort of thing that I'll be showing how to like implement. So in this case, it's implementing just the base kind of authentication system with um, password reset and user account verification. And then in like other tutorials, I'll also just be focusing on just showing like one little thing how to implement. So something like alerts, let's say. So just have a video series focused on that so I can keep the video shorter and just kind of if you want to just know how to implement one specific thing, then it'll be a lot easier. Anyway, let's continue on with setting this up. So my plan in this video is just to do, um, I guess, the base like back end setup here. So in terms of just running like Django and like set up the project. And then I'm going to create an app account where I'm just going to create a custom user model. And then that's all I want to do. Just create the custom user model in this specific video. And then in the next sections, I'll be diving more deeper into the actual like backend logic of how to do all this um, like authentication stuff with the Joser package. So, so to get started, just going to navigate into my backend folder here going to run Python 3 dash M and then them and them. So this is going to create a virtual environment and it's going to be stored in this folder called them. It's going to go ahead and create that. So we'll give that a moment. There we go. So now I have this them um, folder here. So I'm going to do source them bin activate and now that'll activate a virtual environment. And now I'm going to see this, which means I'm in my virtual environment. And now when I install dependencies and libraries, they're going to be inside of this virtual environment instead of my global system. So some things I'm going to need. So pip install, I'm going to need Django, of course, I'm going to need Django rest framework, I'm going to need Django rest framework simple JWT. This is going to be for the JSON web tokens. We do need this package. So having just the Joser package isn't enough to use JSON web tokens. And of course, we're going to need Joser, which is going to be what we're using for all of this, like kind of authentication logic. It's an amazing library that gives us all these capabilities for more of a production level authentication system. Um, we're going to need PSYCOPG2 and PSYCOPG2 dash. Uh, let's get this dash. There you go. Binary. And then this is going to be for communicating with Postgres. We need these two libraries. And 
I think that's all we need off the top of my head. If I need anything else, I'll install it later. So we'll go ahead and just install these packages here. And then that should allow us to actually start setting up this Django project. So there we go. So now if I do a pip freeze, I'll see that I have all these dependencies or, and libraries like installed here. So now I can do Django dash admin start project. I'm going to call it auth system and I'm just going to do a dot so that it's in this current folder instead of making a new folder. So we'll do that. Now I should have this auth system here. And I'm also gonna have this virtual environment and also this manage.py. So now I can use this manage.py to make further commands. So I can do something like Python manage.py starts app accounts. And this will create our accounts app. So there we go. Now we have an accounts app and we have our project auth system. All right, so in this, um, I guess section here, I'm just going to open up this models here. I'm going to start working on the custom user model. And also another thing I might as well do is open up the settings and bring in accounts. And also another thing I'm going to need is Jane or no, I'm going to need rest underscore framework. That's what it is. And then I'm going to also need Joster. So these are the only installs that we should need here. So that'll be in the settings and I'll do further configuration later on. So in this video, I'm just going to focus on this here. So creating a custom user model, I'm going to need to have some imports here. So from Django.contrib.auth.models, I'm going to import abstract base user. I'm going to need permissions mixin, and I'm going to need base user manager. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is create a class user account. And then I'm going to pass in the abstract base user and the permissions mix in. There we go. And then I'm going to create an email field here. So models dot email field. And then I'm going to do a max length. 255 and unique is going to be, be true because we are going to be uh, using the email field as our login field instead of the username, which is the default of Django, which is why we're customizing this. So I'm going to have name here. That'll be models dot character field. And then I'm going to do max length 255. And then I'm going to have is active. That's going to be models dot boolean field default is going to be true and then i'm going to have is staff that's going to be models dot boolean field and default is going to be false all right so i'm going to have a username field so this field here is going to determine what the default login is going to be Normally by default, you would have username as the default login, but we want to have email. And then we're also not even going to have username as kind of a credential that you have to even pass it in order to register an account. So we're just going to have email name and then password is what we're going to be using to register. All right, so we're also going to need required fields. So this is going to be a list of all the required fields. Email is already by default required, so I don't have to include it in this list, but name is one of the other required fields I'm going to need. And of course, if you had like other stuff, like let's say phone, and then that's a character field, and then you would include that here, phone. But the only one we have is name, of course. All right, so I'm going to define get full name here pass in self. This is going to return self dot name. I'm going to copy this. Then I'm going to have get short name. And then again, you're going to pass in self and just return self dot name. And then I'm going to copy this again. This is going to be 
our string function. So double underscore str double underscore pass in self, and we're just gonna return email here. So this is the string representation of this object. All right, so another thing we're gonna need here is objects equal to user account manager. And then this user account manager, is something we're gonna define now. So class user account manager. We're gonna pass in base user manager. So we're overriding this base user manager. And then this user manager is where we're actually gonna be managing things like creating a user. And you can also do things like creating a super user. So you would define these functions here. So to create a normal user, you would do create user, you would define it and it has to match this exactly. If you wanted to do create a super user, it would be define create super user. So it has to match this exactly. But in this, I guess like um, app here that we're making, I'm not going to even use super users at all. So I don't really have a need for this, but um, like if you want to know how to actually do that in my first uh, video series that I made with the real estate app, I actually showed how to like do that. So you can always check that out where I do that setup. But in this project, I'm just going to have this create users. So I'm going to pass in self email name and password equals none. So by default, Django won't let you create a user if you have password none. So you're going to have to pass in a password in order to create a user, which is why we have this here. And then these are basically the fields that you pass in. So you're going to pass in an email, a name, a password into create user, and then that's going to let you create a user. So first thing, if not email, so if there is not an email provided, you're going to raise a value error. Users must have an email address, let's say. And then I'm going to have email is self dot normalize email, which is a built in function, which will normalize the email. We're going to have user is self dot model email equals email name equals name. So we're going to be passing in this normalized email in here instead of the default. So what normalizing an email does is let's say if you have like, I don't know, like Brian at gmail.com, it's going to normalize it. Oop, not, not normalize it like that. <laughs> it's going to normalize it to something like Brian at gmail.com. So it'll like turn everything normalized. So the lowercase letters here. All right. So with that, we have a user. So now we're going to save that user. Actually, before we have to save the user, we have to set the password. So set password, we run this function, which will create a hashed version of the password that we pass in because we don't want to have the plain text password in our database for security reasons. So we're going to hash it using this built in function from Django, then we're going to save the user. So user dot save. And then we're going to return that user. All right, so this is how we create all of this. So this is our custom user model. And then I guess the last thing that we're going to actually need is to go into our settings and have this be used by default. So we're going to go into auth system settings. I'm just going to go at the bottom here, put this right here. So you do auth user model is the field, and then you set it to what your uh, custom user model is. So in my case, it's accounts, which is the name of the app and then dot user account, because that is what we named the model user account. So there we go. So this is all I wanted to cover in this first video, how to just set up this custom user model. And then in the next section, we're going to be delving a little deeper into how to actually use Joser and do all of this kind of authentication system setup stuff. So it's going to be exciting. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next section. Thank you.